reports that the White House is getting together a team of so-called street fighters to deal with the FBI Russia investigation raises this question. Does Jared Kushner have a role on that team? Jared Kushner is, of course, the president's key senior advisor on just about everything, and he reportedly was one of the people who suggested that James Comey be fired. So the good, there's a good chance that Kushner is heavily involved in whatever efforts are underway inside the Trump administration to push back on the Russia probe. And now it appears that special counsel Robert Mueller is consolidating his role as leader of that investigation, which could have an impact on just how the FBI scrutiny of Jared Kushner will play out. David Frum is still with me and joining now is former assistant Watergate special prosecutor Jill Weinbanks. All right, so Jill, I want to start with you on this because this question of whether or not uh, Jared Kushner is a targeted person or merely a witness that the FBI would like to talk to in a benign manner. Should Jared Kushner be concerned about his involvement now in this probe? Jared Kushner should be concerned depending on what he knows and what he's done. And the terminology of whether he's a target, a suspect, a person of interest is really not the key here. It's what did he do, when did he do it, what did the president know, and when did he know it? And there, there seems to be, you know, in any of these sorts of cases, and I'm not an attorney, you, I will defer to you on this, you have you have varying degrees of potential culpability, right? And it would seem to me that it would be helpful to a prosecutor if you could get one of the culpable people to turn on the others. Um, would it be possible that maybe one of these actors, one of these people who are being talked to in this probe, winds up being the witness against the others? And is it likely that it is somebody like a Jared Kushner who is being told you're not a target, at least not now? It's very helpful to have an insider who's cooperating with the prosecution. It seems quite unlikely that the son-in-law of the president would be that person who would turn first, but he may have some uh, exposure in areas beyond the Russia investigation. He may have some financial problems. He may have some, all the dealings he had with Russian banks may be unrelated or related, I'm not sure. So he may have enough that he needs to protect himself. I think it's hard for the president and for him yeah, to be in the White House at the same time together and to have this going on. And David, from I think that is the, the key point is how could I mean in theory because Donald Trump is so reliant on Jared Kushner, if there is a war room to try to push back on the Russia probe, he would be right in the middle of it. He'd be leading it like he's leading pretty much everything else in the administration. How could it be possible though that Jared Kushner could be involved now that he is named as at least a person uh, that the Mueller team is willing to, is interested in talking to? Well, let's just examine two ways in which all of this is kind of bizarre. The, the first way in which is bizarre is normally in an administration, if there is some suspicion, if there's some problem, some ethics accusation, and the people in the administration feel they are innocent of it, they don't set up war rooms. They actually say, let's get this story out. They, 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 they don't fight the, the inquiry, they flood the zone with news. Let us, you know, let's take out the books and the stacks, bury America with facts. Um, and. Even if there's a kind of a bad fact in here, let's wrap it with so many benign facts that America will be bored with the bad fact. That's what you do when you are confident in your case. The other thing that is kind of weird about this, and again, this goes back to the point I made in the previous segment, I just, I just am going to keep banging on because it's, it's really important for viewers to get this, that the constant iteration of prosecution and crime sets people up to look for what may be the very wrong thing. That the things that may have happened here may be extremely serious and not criminal. It's not a crime to be financially beholden to the Russians. It's not a crime to tell them things. It's not a crime to coordinate with them in your election effort if you aren't involved in the hack. Those things aren't crime. They, they are loyalty issues. They are reliability issues. They are security issues. And again, and this goes back to the thing about this bizarre, normally in an administration, if the FBI knocks on your door and says, we think one of your colleagues got a little too close to an unfriendly foreign government, what do you know about it? My God, well, yeah. sit down, officer, let's, let's, I'll tell you everything I know. Because I'm as interested in you, maybe even more so, yeah. in making sure that our administration does not contain security risks. And, and Jill, you know, that's when we get back to sort of the Watergate frame, where John Dean famously said there's a cancer on the presidency. If you look now at the way the public now perceives the Trump administration, Quinnipiac has a poll out. Do you think that Donald Trump is abusing the powers of his office? 54% of Americans in that poll, Quinnipiac poll, say yes. You go to a Fox News poll, typically a poll that would be more favorable, one would think, to Donald Trump. What do you think is the real reason President Trump fired FBI Director Comey? 
60% now say because Comey's investigations were harming the presidency. Only 29% say because these um, investigations were harming the FBI. One more, the Fox News poll, do you think FBI directors should have been fired at all? 53 to 34 people say no. When the confidence is being lost in the presidency itself, we are sort of wandering into that Nixon territory now. We absolutely are. And I think that David was right on many of the things he said. But it doesn't matter whether there's an underlying crime if there is an obstruction of justice. You can interfere with an investigation, which is into an attempt or into a possibility that there's a crime. And even though you may find out there is no crime there, if you interfered with it, that is a crime in and of itself. And some of the allegations that are possibly being investigated may be a threat to national okay. security, not just a violation of Title 18 federal criminal law. They could be endangering our national security. Really quickly, would, in, would firing the FBI director or encouraging your boss, the president, to fire the FBI director potentially be that kind of obstruction? It certainly is. Yeah. And David Frum, you, wanted, uh, you had a comment. Well, I just want to say, I dread spending the next 12 months with various law professors arguing on television about whether or not this meets the standard right. for obstruction of justice. Because it, that, it, that is, it may or may not in the prosecutable sense, but it clearly in lowercase o, lowercase j, obviously it was an attempt to obstruct justice. It was an attempt to shut down an investigation. And whether or not it's a criminal obstruction of justice should, uh, and um, there will be, I mean, the, your bookers have long lists of law professors all over America eager to argue that it's not, and maybe they're even right. It doesn't matter because what happened was the course of justice was obstructed. It doesn't, doesn't matter whether people are going to go to prison. We need to find out whether Russia has penetrated the American government. Yeah, which is why so many people are saying, well, in addition, to what's happening on the Mueller side, we also need to have a commission to look at the overall. The main issue, once again, is that we're supposed to be protecting our national security and our elections from foreign interference. David from Jill Winebanks, thank you both for joining us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.